Well, here we are at the Pasadena, February 2016, ABAA Book Fair, uh, sponsored by the Southern California chapter of ABAA. And our next interview is with Larisse. Larissa. Larissa. Last Castle. name? Castle. Larissa Castle. And what we usually start off with, Larissa, is background. Parents, what they did, siblings, uh, education, um, uh, that kind of thing. So start somewhere and go. Okay. Well, um, I was adopted. I have no siblings. I had great parents. Uh, I was, always knew I was adopted. I learned I was adopted when I was two months old and never doubted any otherwise. Mm. My dad was a steel worker and my mom worked in the garment industry. The schmutty um, trade. Pardon me? The schmutty trade. <laughs> yeah. So they worked hard and, and taught me the value of that and taught me that I could do things if I just would work. And uh, they were as good as their word, so I did. And I, I uh, went, I don't have a formal degree in anything. Um, my last year of college was uh, a sophomore in college. And I went to work, well, I, I traveled around a bit, got married, and um, my husband and I moved to Scotland. Mm -hmm. I wanted to write a book. So we, we got a truck and went to Scotland with a friend, traveled around Europe, wound up in Scotland to write. Mm. <laughs> when we went back to the States, uh, my husband, uh, who has a degree in economics, went to work for Social Security and we lived in downtown Kansas City, which is the home of Glenn Books. Yep. And uh, we would walk downtown in the evening and stare in the window. Just stare in the window? Just stare in the window. Uh, so my formal education and informal education was from artist Glenn. And one reason I wanted to, to do this is for her. Really? <laughs> she's 94. Oh, she's still kicking, huh? She's in Florida with her daughter. Where in Florida? Near Orlando. OK. So I've mentioned you know, trying to get her to talk in some formal way, and she's not comfortable with that. A lot of people aren't. Which is too bad, you know, because once artist starts talking, she's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does your husband do? He retired recently from Social Security, 33, 34 years, director of a national record center in Kansas City. Mm. So while he was still working there, we went ahead and went inside to Glenn Books. Oh, well, you finally did go inside. <laughs> we did go inside. And I stood back a bit, you know. That was the most amazing place. Yeah. And. Um, Mrs. Glenn needed some help at the time, and we volunteered to pack books and just be there. What was the time, what the year? About 1980. Sounds about right. About 1980. So we were there and learned a great deal. She was very generous with her knowledge. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things she taught me to do is to say, I don't know. Yeah. You know, when people would answer the phone, she'd be out on a call, and I would be left to answer. And she would say, don't, just say you don't know. <laughs> you know, and that stood me in good stead. So uh, I, I consider that. I consider Glenn Books my college. And how long did you work there? We were with Mrs. Glenn um, until the shop, she lost the lease on her shop in the late 80s. Yeah fuzzy on the dates. She sold the shop to Carolyn and Fred Gilhausen. Who I know. Who have it now. I, I, I know them very well. Yeah. They're, they're great folks. And when Chris, my husband, and I like to say we went along with the desks. <laughs> so the shop, so, yeah. shop moved and we stayed on and artists stayed with them for three years 
the first three years. They had, they had their own personal tragedy. And I'm glad that they got, got through it and are still buying and selling books. Yeah. So. So what did you do after uh, the Gilkesons took over? The Gilhausens, the Gilhausens we, we, we stayed with them for, for three, year, or three or four years and decided um, our time in Scotland had affected us in a lot of ways, aesthetically, um, the architecture. We wanted some land, so we wanted a stone house mm. on some land, and we could find a stone house, and we could find some land, but we couldn't find a stone house on some land. Yeah, so that, that would be a problem. Whereabouts so, in Scotland did you, did you live? Inverness. Inverness. So, and, and that's really began our interest in the arts and crafts movement and Macintosh et al. in the Glasgow School, which is now our specialty. So we, uh, we decided to build a stone house on some land, and a stonemason taught us every critical point, yeah. and we did that. Where, where is that? That is in Richmond, Missouri. It's about an hour east of Kansas City. Okay. So the upstairs is um, um, our library and, and our book room, and that's where I work from. Hmm. And now that Chris has retired from Social Security, we decided to get a, a little van. <laughs> One would think that we would have gotten over that, but we did that again <laughs> and decided to drive to book fairs, and, and here we are. This is our first... Is this your first book fair? Our here? first venture after retirement and with the van and driving cross-country with the books. Explain the title of your business. Pardon me? Explain your, your business name. Greengate Farm. It's named after Greengate Close, which was Jesse M. King, the illustrator. Her home in Kirkubri, Scotland, was at Greengate Close. Hmm. She lived with E.A. Taylor. And we decided, for sentimental reasons, to name it our place Greengate, but it also didn't sound pretentious in the middle of a Missouri field. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would think so. You know, we could just have a green gate and, and carry on. Uh, your specialties are? Arts and crafts movement in America and Britain, Art Nouveau, the Pre-Raphaelites, um, and all of, the, all of the things in that aesthetic, gardening, illustrated books, fine bindings, the Guild of Women Binders, uh, lucent bindings of, of Cedric Chivers. That, that's us. In fact, we went against our mentor in a way. Our, <laughs> our artists, artists warned us to not sell what we love. Yeah. But uh, we decided otherwise, and we sell what we love, and that way, if we don't sell it, we have it. <laughs> as, as Ken Nebensall once told me, all the books on the shelves are not unsaleable. That's my inventory. That's the way he looked at it. Yeah. So, uh, so you've been in business on your own for how many years? I believe that we left Glenn Books about 1990. I was actually just going to check that date because I thought you would probably ask me that. Circa. Yeah, circa. That's circa good. Then. Circa's good enough. And um, has your interests expanded? stayed the same or contracted since you've been on your own? Expanded. Uh, how big a shop do you have? Uh, how, well, I shouldn't call it a shop. What, how big a place do you have? How many volumes the, do you have? I, I, would, I would estimate that we have about 5,000 volumes. Um, and we don't, the shop is not, not open, it's by appointment, people right. come. That was my cough. <laughs> You're silly, why not? <laughs> so. um, okay, let's carry on with some more interesting and absorbing questions, as he says. Um, other than artists, uh, were there anybody else who was like a mentor or uh, someone that you would look up to and, and ask a question if you had, 
add one? Yes, uh, Doris Fronsdorf. Elliot Doris, yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Helen Younger was very, very helpful. Um, Ian Hodgkins. Oh, yeah. And Ian Hoy. Yeah. When we went to, to Britain, the Ians had a cottage on their place where, where booksellers would often stay. Yeah. You know, so we did. <laughs> and uh, that, their interest in the pre Raphaelites and so forth, there was no better teacher yeah. Oh, yeah. for us. And so generous with their time. And it's effort. very important. A lot of times people say to themselves, why should I share what I know with someone else? Well, I think it's very important that we share, that we keep the business going in some format or another. I agree. And it's exciting to share. It's exciting to... Absolutely. You know, I think it's so much fun. In fact, yesterday at our booth, a father and son stopped by, and it, um, the father said, this is my son's Christmas present to come to a real book fair. And this, the son was 18, maybe. Yeah. And he just looked fascinated. Yeah, a lot you know? of people And you do. just want to grab him. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> grab him and say, go away before you <laughs> become bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about your internet presence. It's tiny. Do you have a homepage? No, we, we, the only place we list is the ABA book, um, website and Biblio. We listed on ABE at one time, but no longer do that. We've considered going back. I have mixed feelings about it. Um, we sold some things on eBay several years ago. Thought we'd give that a try, but I got very frustrated with that. Our images were stolen and- Absolutely, all the time. It was bad, and I, I wrote to the ABAA and said, do you, legally, can I accuse someone of stealing something? And they said, go for it, try it. It doesn't matter, and of course eBay didn't care. So I don't. That's not what I want to do. No. Yeah. So we don't. We don't do that anymore. Um, what is the main source of your business? Uh, are you catalogs, uh, online book fairs, what have you? What? What? How would you break it down? Personal quoting, and it was. Um, we did some fairs. We did very well at arts and crafts antique fairs, mm -hmm. especially when people were restoring homes. We have an awful lot of uh, period reference for architectural restoration and preservation. So we did well there until the recession, yeah. and then not so well. We sort of went down into a little hiatus yeah. to try to decide what back? to do next. Do you see it coming back? I you? do. I, I do see it coming back. Uh, are your customers more visually oriented, or are they like they just like the book as a physical object? Both, both. We have a fair number of people that on the re uh, preservation side, the scholarly side, um, but a lot of people just respond to the beauty of of the book. Um, are glad to hold it, which also takes me back. To, to artists, yeah, you know, artists. Artists. One of the first things she did to engage me was invite me to handle an 11th century illuminated manuscript, and she just put it on. She just put it on the table and yeah. said, yeah. "Pick it up," you yeah. know. Ooh, and it was God. so accessible, and it opened a gate of accessibility, and that excites me to share that and to see someone, people respond to that. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I understand the gloom and doom and the, the book trade. And I, it's, not, it's, it's not because my husband, Chris, worked with Social Security. It was not our sole bread and butter. And I have great empathy for people who are in a different situation. You know, we had the luxury of deciding to hold back from some book fairs or let, let's see what happens. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see. It looks like most people are, are about, Yeah. you know? Did you say this was your first ABA book fair? N no, no. Wh which was your first ABA book fair? First ABA book fair was in Chicago. That's a long time with ago. With Gil I attended an ABA book fair with Ardis. Mm -hmm. But yes, it was at the Palmer House. Yeah, I remember the Palmer House. It was nice. It was great. It was. It's a different world. Car Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Gilhausen and I set that up 
I ourselves. Didn't. So we were both new, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and learned, learned a lot. Well, yeah, you know, when you volunteer, you often find yourself in over your head. Yeah. It's all uh, part of it, I guess. And we did San Francisco Book Fair, and um, Chris and I, and the LA Book Fair, but when it was at the other venue. At uh, the uh, convention. Century City? Yes. And so now we're back for this one. I'm sorry that it, the, the book fair left uh, downtown LA. I, I, I think there's a lot more business to be done there than it is up in Pasadena, but venues are venues and you have to pick one that's Yeah, available. that's true. And of course for us, Pasadena is bungalow, they even have an historic district now yeah. called Bungalow Heaven. Yeah. So a lot of our trade catalogs and things from that period of time are, go, go well with the folks in Pasadena. It seems to be a good match for us. Um, one of the things I, I often ask is, what do you perceive as the great challenges facing us as booksellers in the next five to 10 years? Bringing young people in. I, I, I think that's across the artistic, whether it's fine art or uh, rare books, cars. Um, uh, bringing young people to it and, and finding a place where they can make this their own passion and we will adjust mm. and not be resentful and try to stop. Technology is not going to go away. It's only going to get better. Hopefully. You know, so I think, I think if we move and embrace, I believe that people like to hold books. And I believe that there will be a backlash, in a way, to screens. Mm. So I, I don't think the physical book is in danger. I think the well, challenge the, is to get, get out there and... I think the textual, the, the purely textual stuff, the scholarly books and, you know, annual reports and stuff like that, I mean, there's always going to be somebody who wants to buy that stuff in its physical form rather than its uh, online form. Do you feel the same way? No, we don't do Amazon. Sell, on, don't? sell on Amazon. Um, just, do you sell online? Just, a, just ABAA and Biblio. What percentage of your business would you say is online versus whatever else you do? 80%. 80% online. Right. And uh, do book fairs provide the other 20% or? I don't, we haven't done enough book fairs recently to be able to, to make that judgment. That's one of the things we're in the process of doing now to see if we're, if we miss the window. You know, we're both 64. Yeah. 63, somewhere around there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, by the time you cart the books and you load the books and you unload the books and you do the books and. It, it tends, tends to be a bad You do the math. But it doesn't take much to have that spark. I like being around book people. Yeah, they're basically you intelligent know. and fun. Yeah, they're irreverent. Yeah. You know, they're not going to take it too seriously, or most people won't take it too seriously. You can have an opposing point of view without, you know, making a permanent enemy. I haven't made one, well... I don't know of any. Yeah, well, that's, all you, <laughs> that's, all, that's all you can hope for. That's all you can know hope for. Anybody, but, right. but basically, uh, you're, you're in a competitive sort of field, aren't you? Isn't there a lot of other booksellers doing what you're doing? There's no one in Missouri. Well, well there yeah. are three. But do you mean just the, the specialty? Yeah. Yeah. Although I think it's an easier gate to open because the books are beautifully bound often. Um, some of the designers are familiar to people for other reasons, Macintosh and Stickley, and you know you can find an opening with people mm -hmm. in their lives or something that they've seen at a gallery, an exhibition. And if you can keep that gate open, I think you know it's, it's possible. It's possible. How about this question? Knowing what you know, if you would, uh, would you enter the book business at this point of your life or not? Into the book business. I 
I, the answer would have to be split mm -hmm. in that not, not to depend on it for income. Mm -hmm. For joy, absolutely. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I wake up every morning and say, what, what am I going to sell today? What am I going to buy today? What excitement am I going to you know, be able to generate with someone? And uh, I don't know. I, I can't think of myself doing anything other than what I'm doing. No. Uh, anything else would be a waste, frankly. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a pleasant person. I'm a more, well, I'm a more pleasant person in the book world. Than you are normal. Than out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, in other words, if you, if you want to get anywhere with you, see you at a book fair or something. Uh, yeah, talk to I'm you better. On the street. I'm happier and yeah. <laughs> Yes. Most people do relax, uh, except those who uh, come here with only one purpose, and that is to sell. Yeah. Uh, and there's certainly so much more than just selling at a book fair. With yes, the to me, the camaraderie. Very important. It's very important. That's networking. Yes. Yes. People, when they find out what you do, they may have some things that they can sell or swap with you for things that they do. And I think it's a great business. But I also see the future is not as bright as it might have been 25 or 30 years ago. I see that as well. I think, I think a lot of that handwriting was on the wall. Yeah. Nobody and, wanted to read it, though. No. You know, I think it's difficult for scholarly material because people can look all of these things up online, yeah. even though you hope that there will be a percentage of people who go into academics that you can say a well a well lived life a well rounded life I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like I'd, I really don't want to walk into a professor's office and see no book it would make me uncomfortable no, <laughs> but maybe that's my age you know maybe if I were a kid they'd see books and think oh god yeah. you know why isn't there a map here why isn't there a print here instead of all these crappy books yeah well do you when you go find material are you a, a, a the scouting kind, or do you buy collections? Scouting. Do you buy collections at all, ever? We, no, we bought, we were very involved with Glenn Books in buying collections. But after we went on our own, we're just too small. I see. You know, the, we, don't, we don't have an ad in the yellow pages. We don't really have the capacity to deal with a large collection or to market it mm -hmm. at this point. So unless something changed drastically, I would probably t tend to, if it were a collection of any size, bring Carolyn and Fred Gilhausen into it. Yeah. You know, we're not partners at all in any no. way, but no. we, our regard for them is, is immense. And, you know, they, Glenn Books, th just the name, still yeah. carries the cachet, so. I used to do business with Frank Glenn her husband, many, many years ago. And uh, it was a wonderful place to go to. Yes. And if it was still around, it would still be a wonderful place yeah. to go to. Well, you know, I was, um, a couple of years ago, I was the uh, president of the Missouri Center for the Book. And when I did that, we were able to get a literary prize going for artists. Oh. And this is the first year it will be awarded. It's a $5,000 prize for a book relating to Missouri. So I've written to Kurt Gippert about it, and you know, so people know that. So she's being honored by, by that. That's great. So th that's good. And artists always like to say, you know, Frank, Frank was quite a lot older than an artist. Yeah. But she credits him with giving her uh, her world. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was, uh, he was certainly one of the great all-time booksellers. In his now, year, and in a question his... for you: Do you know if Frank was a founding member of the ABAA? No, know... I do not. Okay. I don't know the answer to that, but you ought to write to the House House Committee uh, of ABAA and ask them if they have information like that, because we all our stuff is at the Grolier Club, so there's a librarian over there, and I think you should be able to find that answer out fairly easily. Okay, I, because I, I, I have said that in the past to people, and I, I think I may be in error. I might I, have just been an early member, so. Yeah, um, the association started in 1948, so uh, anything before was, that yeah. wouldn't be, uh, 
wouldn't be of any, uh, well, it should be of interest, but uh, apparently the, it, it's not as much as it should be. But in any case, um, last question. Do you have any uh, siblings, or, well, you don't have any siblings, but do you have any children who are interested in your, in your business? No, I have a nephew. Who's interested? I think he might be. He might not know it yet. Uh -huh. How old is he? <laughs> He's 30. He should 32. know it by now. Well, I know that we, he was quite interested for a while, but then he went off to school and he recently married, so I, I don't know where he'll land mm -hmm. in his life. But he would be the only person, the only young person that would be interested in our mm -hmm. business. And, and do you find any handicap for being where you are? The physical location? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there's no one there. <laughs> well, well, if there's no one there, there's not going to be any customers there either. Right. <laughs> so that does put it all to online yeah. for book fairs. Yeah. Right. Well, guess what? We're at the end of 30 minutes. Okay. It comes really quick, doesn't it? It does. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you. And, Thank you, Michael. Um, have a go sell some books. Okay, will do. <laughs> will do. Okay. <laughs>